Hey Franken friends, it's Greg Smith, aka Dr. Frankintosh, and today I have the simplified interface to Pico DVI. You may have seen Pico DVI, it's the classic demo of doing HDMI on the Raspberry Pi Pico, but it hasn't really evolved since it was first released, and today I've got a simplified interface to it that will give you 640 by 480 pixels, or 320 by 240, or any vertical in between those, and uh, up to three bit planes of graphics, plus a very small graphics package so you can draw lines and such. So stay tuned for the next Dr. Frankintosh. Welcome back. So, as always, my disclaimer, please don't like this video, don't subscribe to this channel, don't click up there or down there, don't watch my other channels, and please, your time is precious, but thank you so much for spending part of it with me. Now let's get into it. So, if you remember, about three years ago, the Raspberry Pi Pico uh, came out, and Luke Wren created this amazing library that gave the Pico the ability to do HDMI. And what he did was he used bit banging, which is the ability to really quickly flip uh, bits on the GPIO and basically emulate an HDMI signal, but not quite HDMI. It was actually DVI, which is a standard that came before HDMI. You can't say HDMI unless A, it um, conforms to all of the uh, prerequisites, and B, you pay a licensing fee to whomever owns the license for that. So, um, but the project was really brilliant. In fact, you can see some of the demos behind me. Um, but since Ren uh, released his library, um, I haven't really seen a lot done with it. So I was watching another video, and I'll link to it below, um, from a guy named Dr. John EA Limited. And uh, he's a really smart guy. He's, he's a robotics expert, and he's been using the Pico to do a lot of really fun things with robotics. So I watch his channel pretty regularly, and he was talking about controlling a TFT display with the Pico and no frame buffer. And that kind of triggered something for me. I remember back in the day, um, Jay Miner created what was called displayless graphics, and he incorporated that into the Antic chip for the Atari 800. And that uh, graphics capability had no frame buffer, uh, but it used sprites. And depending on which line of raster you were on, it would display a bit of that sprite. And so you just had a list of things to show rather than trying to bitmap everything and uh, throw it into a frame buffer. So that got me to thinking that maybe I could do that with Ren's HDMI package. So I went to his repo, downloaded it, and started to reverse engineer what he did. And let me tell you, it's a freaking work of genius because that stuff uh, is way beyond me. He uh, has to do what's called TMDS uh, timing signals. And uh, he creates these signals or these symbols that then uh, he puts into a buffer and sends down the pipeline and out the HDMI uh, connection that he's got to the Pico. Um, I was able to figure out how most of it works, but not the low-level TMDS stuff. And what I found was that for the really impressive demos that he did, like the full uh, um, HDMI graphic image of a Vista, the sprite demos, uh, and, and others, he used both cores of the Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, and, you know, he would sort of like set up a scan line on, on core zero and then uh, send it to core um, one, which would display the scan line while it was generating the next scan line in, in core zero. And it would sort of tag team between the two, uh, uh, scan, between the two cores to create a, basically using 100% of both cores, or in some cases 50% of one and 100% of the other. So one of my design goals was to create a uh, simplified interface that would allow anybody to create these displayless graphics and possibly put like boxes on the screen that could move around and ultimately create a windowing system. But the more I learned about how Ren created this library, the more I realized that it wasn't simple and there was really no easy way to create a graphics library that didn't involve multiprocessing or co-processing between the two processors. So I went back and looked at my design goals. And the first one was that I wanted a simplified interface for Pico DVI. Second, I wanted all processing to occur on the background in core one without impacting core zero. Secondly, I wanted multiple graphics modes. Um, I wanted 1280 by 720, wasn't able to get there, but I was able to get to 640 by 480, and I wanted to be able to do 320 by 240 
and other graphics modes if they were possible. I also wanted a color palette and I was hoping to get a palette of 24 or 16 bits. And that was also challenging. I ended up with only three bits of color. And finally, I wanted text modes. I wanted to create 40 columns by 25 rows, like on the Commodore 64, or 80 columns or more. So I didn't reach all of those goals, but in a week, I was able to put together enough of a graphics package that puts all the processing on Core 1, which is my first goal. Secondly, gave you multiple graphics modes. 640 by 480 is the baseline, and then 320 by 480 is the secondary, and you can get any dimension between 480 and as small as you want, and it'll double pixel vertically, and it'll put padding on the top and the bottom. And then finally, the color palette, I was only able to get three bits of color for the color palette. So you can have bit planes of one, two, or three uh, of whatever resolution you choose. But that means you can only choose from red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, and white. So I will be doing more with this down the road as I learn more about how Ren implemented the TMDS features and hopefully get more colors. So before we get started, I do want to mention that I'm using the Pimeroni HDMI card. It's on sale now. You can get them from Pimeroni for, I think, $25. You can also get an HDMI breakout card from Adafruit, and Lady Ada has a, a, a video on doing HDMI as well. So let's get started. So what I'd like to do is walk through uh, five example programs that I deliver with GDVI, our simplified interface to the Pico DVI. And we'll start off with Hello World, which is a 320 by 240 graphic with um, all the words Hello World bouncing around the screen. So to start, we uh, initialize an, uh, an LED uh, GPIO so that we can see proof of life while the app is running. Uh, we set the width to 320, the height to 240, and the bits to 2, which means we have four pens to draw with. Each pen gets a different color. And here's our palette, even though this says a palette of 8, they're only going to use the first four of white, red, green, and blue. We initialize the HDMI system, calling GDVI init, giving a width, a height, the number of bits, and a user pointer. This is just user data that gets carried along. We're not going to use this right now, so I set it to null. Uh, we set the palette to the four colors that we're interested in, and then we start the HDMI, and that's it. At this point, HDMI is running in the background, and our application is running in Core 0 in the foreground. So we paint the Hello World graphic. Uh, we set our blink rate to 100. We then loop forever, blinking our LED and moving our XY coordinate and repainting our screen. And if we look at Hello World, you can see how I've given you four very basic graphics functions, one of them being GFX Clear, which takes a GDVI uh, object and sets the screen to whatever pen you specify. Notice that it's not color here, it's a pen, because we have a palette of four colors. The next step is to draw two boxes around the edge of the screen so that we know where the boundaries are. We set our X and Y coordinates. Then we draw two vertical lines and a half line across to, for the letter H, a vertical line and three half lines for the letter E, and so on to draw Hello World. So from here, Core 1 is drawing the HDMI display, while Core 0 is looping forever, moving our graphic repainting on every iteration. So let's take a look at that. The next example is a classic screensaver, a bunch of lines that bounce around the screen with tracking. If you remember the old game uh, Quicks or Kicks, it looks like that. So we set the screen width and height this time to 640 by 480 and the number of bits to three. So we're going to have eight colors. Um, here are the screen colors and the line count is uh, 25. The, this is the number of lines that we're going to have in our Quicks uh, display. So uh, down in the main code, we set up our palette to eight colors. Uh, we initialize GDVI with a screen width, height, and number of bits. We set the palette to whatever colors we want, and we start the processing. We call our init screensaver, which draws the initial screen. We set our rate to 50, and then every 50 milliseconds, we blink our LED, uh, and then we draw our screensaver again. Let's take a look at the screensaver code. So here we have the structure of our line, which are x1, y1, x2, y2, which are the two points of the line. 
then dx1 and dy1, which are the deltas that the top of the line is going to move, and dx2 and dy2, which are the deltas that the bottom of the line will move, and a color for each line. Uh, line count is set to 25, so we've got 25 lines. And so we initialize the first line with some random uh, position on the screen, and then also the delta that, that the line is going to move with some random uh, delta both in the x and y coordinates. Next, we have the move line function, which takes x1 and y1 of the top of the line and x2 and y2 the bottom of the line and add their dx and dy values, moving the top of the line and the bottom of the line around. And finally, if the line is outside of the bounds of our screen, we want to bounce the other direction. So we take the opposite of the dx or the dy, and so it goes in the opposite direction. Then the draw lines function simply iterates through all 25 lines and prints them out. The move lines function starts at the end of the array of lines, goes backwards through copying them forwards until we get to line uh, zero, and then we move that one line. And then finally, uh, to do the screensaver, we clear the screen, we draw our box for reference, uh, we move all the lines, and then we draw all the lines, and that's the whole program. And here's what it looks like. Now I've got three demos of how palettes work and they're a little funky. Uh, for one bitmap and two bitmaps, we actually have a palette that you can modify in real time and it changes all the colors of the screen without redrawing the screen. But for technical reasons, when you get to three bits, there's not enough time in the raster image or the scan line generation to manipulate the, the palette colors. So you actually end up just repainting the screen uh, from scratch. Uh, I hope to get this fixed in a later version, but for now, this is how it works. So if you have a one-bit palette, you draw your screen, and in this case, we're gonna draw um, some numbers on the screen. They look like seven segment LEDs. It's gonna be the width of the screen, and then the height of the screen, then the um, number of pixels, uh, and the current foreground color. So in the main program, we, you know, we do our initialization as before. We draw the entire screen. We set our redraw rate at 50, and then you'll notice down here, after we blink the LED, all we do is update the palette. And then the update palette code, you can see here, all we're doing is changing the foreground color uh, and then resetting the palette. So this is cycling through all the different colors for the foreground. This is the single bit mode, mind you. So there's only one foreground color and a background color. So we're cycling through all eight of the colors with the foreground, just resetting the palette, and you get this effect of a constantly changing uh, color scheme. So let's take a look at that now. Now here's the same program, this time it's 640 by 480, and we have two bit planes. So we have four colors uh, in our palette. And uh, we do the same thing here where we update the palette, and then I do a little trick here where I just update the last line of the display so that you can see that the uh, foreground color is changing and has the same effect. So now here's two bit planes with four colors, but we're cycling through all eight colors uh, in the foreground. So in our final example, uh, we have 640 by 480. Uh, I'm cycling through eight colors, and so you, uh, there, there'll be a rainbow at the bottom, and you can kind of see the colors marching along. Um, this, because of technical reasons, I actually have to redraw the display every time, and you can see this down here in the draw screen function. In a later version, I do hope to fix this so that you can just change the palette colors, but um, you get the same effect. You have a palette, uh, eight pens, each pen can be a different color, and when you update the palette and redraw the screen, it redraws the screen in a new set of colors. So thanks again for joining me on this journey. Uh, my next project is to do the same thing, but for VGA. This is all open source, so please take advantage of it. Let me know what works for you and what you might like to see changed. Until next time, I'm Greg Smith, a.k.a. Dr. Frankintosh.